I'm Ray Clemens of Natural Building Works, and I want to show you the beauty of rammed earth, and I'll even teach you a little bit about how to make it. Okay, here we are in Tucson, Arizona, where Natural Building Works does most of our work. This is a rammed earth wall project that we did for a client in 2022. This one we call 10,000 waves because we just have 10,000 waves. This is four colors, it's two types of soil. This is one of the most spectacular pieces we've done, the most unique, the most labor intensive, but the most beautiful really. Here's another example of our rammed earth work in the area. This project's a great example of doing more than just earth. We're doing a permaculture food forest where we have 12 inches of wood chips and we have fruit trees and so we're providing food and habitat. This whole thing's a real regenerative food forest. Rammed earth is great for all sizes of projects. You can do benches, you can do yard walls, you can do garden walls, you can do gates. You can also take it all the way into your house. You can build an entire house out of rammed earth. All right, now that you've seen what you can do with rammed earth, let's get into the demo. Okay, here we are at our testing grounds where we have a bunch of different samples, a bunch of soil types, a bunch of soil colors, a bunch of uh, combinations. We leave them out here in the elements to get rained on, to get beat by the sun, and see which ones perform better than others. So in order to build rammed earth, you need a form, right? So here's the forms we're gonna use today. We're making a small bench out of our Simmons prefabricated forms. They're a metal frame with plywood inserts. An alternative to these Simmons prefab forms is actually creating your own forms with plywood, whalers, and pipe clamps. This can be an easily accessible method when you're just getting started. And you can learn more about these methods in David Easton's book, The Rammed Earth House. And one of the most important things to do that is often forgotten is you need to oil your forms. And so today I have some water-based uh, concrete form release. So this is a white milky substance. We just spray it on uh, kind of generously. Make sure we get it all really soaked in. This stuff is going to make sure that the earth and the cement, especially the cement in the mix, doesn't stick to the forms. One of the most important things when you're doing this is to get the edges, especially with kind of already used bores, they can be really dry. So we use this pallet knife to kind of push the, the form release around and make sure we get in all those little nooks and crannies. All right, so we have some of our form set up. We got our sideboards, we've got an end board, and to attach the sideboard and the end board, we use one of the L brackets. This all comes with the system. In order to put these things together, we have these wedge bolts. So these wedge bolts, they go in one side, one goes in horizontal, one goes in vertical, and they wedge it in, lock it in. Okay, so we got our side walls up, we got our angles on, we got our end boards up. We're only gonna tamp to this tall, but in order to tamp that tall, it's good to have something above it as well. So I'm gonna put on two more of these side boards so we have some vertical distance that our tamper can run up against, and then we can tamp to this height. So now we got all of our form boards up. We want to check that it's level. And we want to check that it's square. All right, let's talk about soil. Everybody's favorite topic. How do you do the soil? What's the soil look like? What is suitable soil? So this is a mix that I've learned. Um, it is a site soil. So it's a clay site soil that's 25 to 50% clay. Um, we're going to mix that three parts, clay, clay soil. We're going to do two parts sand. And this is like a coarse sand. It's not masonry sand. It's not mortar sand. It's a real multi-grain kind of sand. So wash sand, not beach sand is important. So two, and then we're using one part this is 3 8 inch rock. You can use up to half inch if you like. 
3 8 is what we're choosing for this. We got one part gravel. Okay, everybody's next question. Is there cement in that? How much cement? What's your percentage of cement? So we're using a gray Portland cement, something that you can get at any masonry store, any building supply shop. And we're doing somewhere between three and 10%, right? So we, we're usually hitting 7% with, with, these, with these projects we've been doing lately. And we're trying to push to 3% and we really want to get to 0%, which is raw rammed earth. And what we're doing here is stabilized rammed earth. There's, really, there's a real big difference between raw rammed earth, stabilized rammed earth, and the mix design is really different between the two. The one thing about the rammed earth that Natural Building Works does, what makes it unique is the way we do our coloring. And so let's talk about color for a little bit. So we have our cement, right? So we're using gray cement and we're doing an adobe pigment is the color that we've chosen. It's kind of give us a, gives us a nice yellow we also have a white cement that we put the same pigment in. So then we get kind of a dark and a light color that then we can mix together that creates a real nice uh, kind of cloud effects is how we, how we kind of do our thing here. Now we got our different parts of our soil all in a one bucket here. So we got our site soil, we got our gravel, we got our sand, three soil, two sand, one gravel, cement to about 7%. And the important thing is to mix this all dry first. So we're gonna mix this dry before we put any water in. So I'm gonna wear a mask while I'm mixing this. Uh, the cement particles, the dust particles, they can get in your, your, your lungs and they can do damage. All right, so what's next? We got our dry soil all mixed up to solid consistency and we're gonna need some water. So water content can differ depending on what kind of soil you're using and how wet it is already from ambient temperature, ambient moisture. Each soil has kind of a sweet spot for how much moisture content you want in it. And that is usually determined by lab results, a proctor test, but we're gonna go by feel and by sight for now. Uh, what we're looking for is kind of rained on. So if it rained all day and you dug a hole, that's the kind of moisture content we're looking for. All right, so we got our water in. And this is what I'm talking about when I say rained on. It's not too wet, it's not too dry. Everything is kind of a dark color. It looks like it's been rained on, right? One of the, one of the key tests is the squish test and then the drop test. So you squish it in your hand. It's supposed to hold into one solid ball, so maybe this is a little bit dry still. If we grab a piece and we squish it, it should come into one piece, so it's still breaking apart. I'm gonna throw a little bit more water in this. So now it's holding into a nice ball when I squeeze it. We're gonna do the drop test now. So you get your ball, you drop it from shoulder height, straight down onto a hard surface. The key things to look for is if it's holding like a peak, and is exploding like fireworks, this is a nice looking drop test. If it's too wet, it's just gonna splat all in one piece. If it's too dry, that peak is not gonna be there. It's all just gonna splatter out. So what we're looking at here, it's really good. Now we got our soil all mixed up. We got our form up and greased. Now it's time to put the soil in the form. This is a piece of rebar with a pallet knife taped to the end. So this is used when you have a pretty tall wall. Sometimes we put our forms up to 10 or to four feet here and holding one of these in your hand to flatten out the dirt on the bottom is just too far away. So we use this guy to flatten out our soil. The other side is our depth gauge. This tape is at six inches. So we got a six to seven inch uh, depth here. When we're doing pneumatic tamping, six inches is good. You could go up to eight inches if you want. If we're doing hand tamping, you want to be down to five or four, four or five inches in depth. So we use this side. We're going to stick it down into the soft soil and it's going to show us how deep it is. So there's two methods to tamp with. You can do hand tamping and you can do pneumatic tamping. Hand tamping is the most affordable. If you have 25 bucks, 30 bucks, uh, American, you can buy an 8x8 uh, wooden stick tamper. These work pretty well. Um, 
in order to use the pneumatic tamper, there's a much bigger investment, $12,000, $20,000 kind of investment. So if you're doing a full house, if you're doing this as a business, maybe you can afford you can, to invest in the pneumatic tamper. If you're just getting started, hand tamping works fine. Do this, work your way up until you can get that pneumatic tamper going. You wanna make sure the bottom is clean. This one's been laying out here and it's full of leaves, leaf litter. So I'm gonna use our handy tool here. I'm just gonna scrape this. Make sure there's no goop on the bottom. Goop, the soil will stick to this and so every now and then you gotta just come back, scrape this flat and then you'll have a nice flat tamp surface. All right, so we have an eight by eight wood handle tamper made in China, kind of a basic tamper that you can get at the hardware store. These ones, they work well for tamping and they can be your only source of tamping. Um, in certain situations, if you're doing a wall that's taller, um, you wanna get more compaction out of it. So we have made some smaller surface area tampers. This one I think is six by three. Um, and this will have a smaller surface area, so you'll get a tougher, comp uh, a, a stronger compaction out of it. So you go once over with the eight, and then you go once over with this little guy. Now we got our soil mixed up, it's mixed wet, we're ready to go. Now we have a dark color, we have a light color. Remember it's the same soil, it's the same pigment, the only difference here is gray cement and white cement. Now that we've tamped a couple lifts with the pneumatic tamper, you can see how much power these things hold and how useful they are because it's so quick, so much quicker and there's so much less torque going on your elbows. My elbows are telling me to use a pneumatic tamper now after doing four or five years with the hand tamper. Another great thing that the pneumatic tamper offers is it lets us tamp thicker lifts. So we can tamp eight inches of soft soil and it'll tamp down to about six. With the hand tamper, you start at five or four or five inches and it'll tamp down to three. So with the pneumatic tamper, you can do more faster because you're going thicker and it moves so much faster. Now that this is all tamped and cured, now it's time for the big reveal. Here's our final product, a little slice of rammed earth heaven, a tiny little bench, not bad for a couple hours of work. So I hope you learned a lot from this video. And if you'd like to learn more, I think it's one of the best ways to learn is to see this in person, get your hands dirty, put the dirt in your hands, tamper in your hand. So if you're interested in that, check us out at naturalbuildingworks.com. We'll be posting workshops as they come available. Follow us on any social media, uh, follow along, learn more, do more. Happy tamping.